welcome to New Voices in AI, the series from AI Hub where we celebrate the voices of students, early career researchers and those with a new perspective on AI. I am Joe Daly, Engagement Manager for AI Hub and this week I'm talking to Nicola Brandizzi about some of his work and without any further ado, let's begin. Hello uh, and welcome, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Um, if you could just introduce yourself, tell us uh, who you are, where you are. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm Nicolò Brandizzi. I'm a PhD student at the University of uh, Sapienza, Rome, Italy, and I'm just in my second year of PhD right now. Nice. Um, and so how did, how did you kind of get into AI? Hmm. It, it was quite unexpected, actually. I just, I just found myself in AI, I guess. You know, I was just following every courses and at the end of, uh, of a semester, usually have some motivational speaker coming from, uh, you know, master or also PhD. And they talk about how's their life. And I was pretty amazed uh, at the idea of doing a PhD and continuing my studies. Actually, I was pretty scared to go work. So it's like, I love studying. Let's continue with that. Yeah, that's, that's quite relatable. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, uh, and so uh, what kind of things are you working on at the moment? Mm, I'm working uh, especially on reinforcement learning in multi-agent systems. So my, but my aim right now is on emergent communication, uh, which is that kind of um, communication that emerges between artificial agents sharing a common goal in a game. You know, uh, it can be any game. It can simulate a real world environment or an Atari game is the same. So, and my, my actual scope is actually to have also human in the loop, you know, a multi-agent system with both artificial agents and humans and have a kind of common language to interact between each other. That's, that's quite cool. So it's like kind of humans, humans and the AI kind of like interacting and like- Really like, hot topic right now, human and the AI. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Um, and I guess is that like kind of working towards kind of like a shared goal kind of in the game? Kind of. Yeah, we have plenty of artificial intelligence, which are way better than humans at uh, uh, doing mm. stuff, you know? Yeah. But we miss and we lack the effort in order to have both human and artificial intelligence as agents to work together for a shared goal. Mm. Mm. Um, and what kind of, I guess, I mean, it's, it sounds like a really interesting kind of area, but what kind of the things that really excite you about AI kind of in general? In general, well, well, the one thing it, it really excites me is it, the ability for AI to shove off the work of human beings. So we, as human beings, can be creative. We can shine in areas where artificial intelligence, at least right now, uh, it's not even uh, comparable, you know. But there are also areas in which humans' abilities are kind of wasted for repetitive and autom and works and jobs which can be automated. And I believe that. Uh, having uh, artificial agents together with humans uh, can save both a lot of time and effort for a human being, but also can bring us more free time to, you know, focus on those kind of ability we we have that agents, artificial agents, do not. That makes the most sense. Yeah. Um, and what do you think are some of the kind of big, biggest challenges or, or sorry changes um, in AI in the next kind of five to ten years? Well, I just talked about uh, uh, job automation, which is a big no, a big red cross for, you know, like a lot of human beings, because they always think about uh, robot taking over their jobs. But I mean, the integration between both worlds would be the best for everyone uh, also to, you know, and I think this is one of the biggest challenge we have to actually embrace uh, this kind of automation and also to understand that it, it can be for the best, obviously, we do also have to consider ethical issues and work issue, related issues. But I, I mean, uh, in my opinion, this would be the um, one of the biggest challenges in the upcoming years, especially considering our focus right now on uh, human-centered AI. Mm, mm, absolutely, yeah. It's kind of, there's, there's like, I guess, so many aspects of kind of combining human and AI kind of abilities. There's- Yes, it's I mean, really uh, hard. <laughs> a whole whole PhD on it, I guess, in some ways. And it's not going to be enough. No. no. <laughs> <Not even close. laughs> um, so, um, 
I mean, we kind of touched on it a little bit already, but what do you think are some of the implications um, of your research and sort of what kind of makes it interesting? Well, they, yes, as we already said, the implications are more free time for human beings. And I mean, free time, um, for me, free time is uh, actually activities or all those activities in which a human can shine, you know, uh, like it can be a hobby, it can be really good at sports, it can be really good at art and paintings. And also, um, I, I, I'm, I, also, I also would love to have a society uh, where like that's my personal goal <laughs> yeah. a, a society where you have uh, you know uh, psychologists and therapists uh, being aided by artificial intelligence where actually so right now you have one uh, therapist that is following uh, I don't know five to ten uh, patients I guess that's a that's a really high number but my hope is that with uh, the aid of artificial agents you can actually follow more people in a more personalized matter and you also uh, the important thing is here that you you do not get rid of the therapist that's that's a must you know it's a human yeah. being human beings cannot be replaced but you also have the ability uh, for him or her to uh, how, uh, you know, to follow more patients in a more personalized way. Yeah, yeah, it's really kind of supplementing rather than replacing is... Yeah, yeah, it's not replacing, it's aiding. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I guess you've also said already just then kind of about the therapists, how they could potentially use it, but what are some maybe other ways that you hope that your research could be used in the future? Other ways... Uh... Well, I guess uh, a therapist was an example, but you also have medical doctors. During the pandemic, you had a lot of uh, doctors uh, kind of the, using uh, uh, automation and actually robot, the pepper robot. You know, if, if you're familiar, it's like this really small and cute robot uh, with which you can actually interact with patients being in an intensive care uh, hospital, you know, being really sick uh, of COVID or other, other diseases. And uh, a doctor can, uh, must not be in the same hospital, but not even in the same country. It can be all the way around the world, just doing its job, but again, aided by technology. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the point about COVID is certainly very salient at the moment. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, how to use these technologies, especially in these kind of trials, I guess. My best friend right now, and I'm so used zoom google meets and everything and, it, and it's on one side it's really comfy to be in your room and in your house having meets on the other side you do miss of uh, you kind of miss the human interaction part a lot yeah yeah do you kind of i guess they kind of you hope that there's like a nice balance somewhere between yes. between two yeah I think balance is the most in life you know but yeah. it's super challenging so uh, I know besides kind of just the PhD um, thing, everything that we've kind of covered so far, you are so involved um, in some other things. Can you possibly tell us a little bit, a bit more about some of those? Actually, I'm involved in uh, some um, uh, organization here in Italy, uh, just uh, like the Erasmus Student Network, which is super fun. I went in back in Erasmus in my master and I could, could never leave it. <laughs> so I joined the ESN organization, which I really recommend. For helping Erasmus students, but also uh, this new uh, research, uh, Rising Research Net, which is a subset of uh, CLEAR, uh, which I have over here, and it stands for Confederation of Laboratories for Artificial Intelligence Research in Europe. It's quite a mouthful. Intensively <laughs> done. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we do have this R2Net Slack channel where we, uh, I think we just reached 120 people and we are all PhD students from around Europe are interested in artificial intelligence and uh, researching kind of different fields. But we have a lot of um, um, or, uh, meetings and also kind of fun activities, pub quiz and stuff, so we can discuss more about our research and just know to uh, just uh, get to know each other. We're also scheduling uh, an in-person meeting, probably it's going to be in a few months. And COVID, if COVID goes all right, so we'll see. Fingers crossed, yeah. Um, and I, we will also make sure to have some links to all of that as well on the website. So um, if you, people do want to find out more, that's easy, easy to do. Um, and I guess to kind of, well, semi wrap up. Um, so we have our 
chain of questions from uh, the other interviewees in New Voices. Um, so we have your kind of surprise question um, from uh, Maria Diaziega, um, who uh, would ask, um, what would you like to see kind of changing about the culture in the AI community? Mm, hard question about the culture in the AI community. I guess we uh, that I guess like uh, more human centered, but we are having that already. Ethical issues are already being addressed. So I mean, ah yes, actually, um, how do you call it? Um, um, I would love to see more researchers. Uh, involved in uh, divulgating science, you know, to people that uh, come from other fields, like or, or not even people that are do not know anything about uh, artificial intelligence. My friends usually they think uh, of me as the one implementing Skynet for Terminator, and it, it it it's quite upsetting sometimes because I'm here trying to do my best also to, uh, in my opinion, help uh, the humans and uh, humanity in general. So I would love to see more researchers involved in divulgating their uh, fields, their studies and their research to yeah. everyone. Yes, in a more accessible way. Yeah, it's actually kind of in the right place, kind of with AI, one of our kind of main things is trying to improve kind of science communication because you're saying about Skynet and all of those kinds of things I mean I've, I've definitely heard that a lot with people saying kind of are you making a robot army and it's like it's the number one answer when I, I get yeah. to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah so science communication is I think it's it's really important to kind of combat that as much as possible um yeah that's a I mean it's a really great answer um and yeah really great answers across the board um thank you <laughs> thank you so much for for joining us today for having me what about the, the, the question for the next one? Of course, yes. I can't believe I've forgotten that. Yes, what is your question? <laughs> yes. Um, yes, what is your question for the next next person? So I kind of have two. Like, the first one is quite uh, easy, and it's like, uh, would you rather go with academia or industry? Ooh. So that's one question everyone has in the PhD. Yeah. But the other one, it's like more if uh, they answer uh, academia, I would love to know their opinion on how is uh, the research, uh, you know, the whole research thing doing, you know, with journals that PhD students must publish on journal and it's it's a must, you know, and journals, they, they get to be paid for that, they're not paying reviewers, so all the organization, what their, what's their opinion on the organization, not like an answer, I don't, I'm not expecting them to have a solution, obviously, just an opinion. Yeah, that's, I, mean, I guess, do it. Is it kind of like the the flip side of that question for like industry people? Yeah, industry people are just uh, <laughs> for them, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that's a really really great question. Um, I'm glad that we managed to remember to get that in. <laughs> but either way, thank you again so much for for your time today. And finally, thank you for joining us today. If you wanted to find out any more about Nicola's work uh, or catch up on the rest of the series, you can find out everything on AIHub.org. And do join us for the next episode where I'll be talking to Amema Hadri about her work. And until then, goodbye for now. <laughs>